Hi everyone, I'm Jack, Tabletop Scan Man. This is an Open Scan Mini. This is a Warhammer miniature. Let's see how they do. Quickly on this, the OpenScan team reached out to me on a comment on one of my other videos and then they kindly sent me a kit for this. They haven't paid me to do this video, they're not sponsoring it at all. They have just supplied the scanner and told me to test it for them. <laughs> Quick bit on the scanner itself. It runs off a camera connected to a Raspberry Pi in the front here. There's a bit of assembly work, it's not a thing to take straight out of the box, but if you fiddled with any FDM printers or replace the screen on one of your resin printers for example you should be well on your way to be able to do this fundamental bits behind this is called photogrammetry so what you're aiming to do is get a load of photos of of your model as it spins and rotates around this spins around 180 i think it or like 90 degrees this way the table obviously spins 360 degrees and that gives you a full 360 degree sphere almost of uh, the thing that you're trying to recreate or scan that then is processed either by separate software or you send it off to the open scanner cloud it then sends you back an obj hopefully if it's had a decent reconstruction of the finished model so i'm going to try and keep this fairly similar to the other post i did on the revo point mini um, we'll start up with the uh, statue marine from the battle from a crag box set first up we're going to work on the prep for this so so very easy, you're just going to need some baby powder, talcum powder, dry shampoo, I think you can get foot spray as well, or you can go out and buy some expensive scanning spray, up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, because this model's already painted, I recommend you don't want anything too abrasive or something that's going to take a while to take off, which is where the scanning spray comes in. But that being said, I I'm going to repaint this anyway because I, repaint I painted it when I was uh, 12 years old. So I'm not too fussed about the paint job. So I'm going to use talcum powder. The main reason for doing the powder coating or the uh, preparation work is so that you end up with a nice contrasting surface with loads of like thousands of little details all over it. That's what the software uses to pick up and define details. So if you find that you're getting a scan and it is not picking up as much detail as you would like, or it doesn't match something else that you've seen online, the chances are they've primed it really dark and then covered it in a spray coating or uh, like I'm doing with talcum powder and it will come out like a million times better. Okay, so once that prep work is done, all I've done is added a bit of blue tack to the top of this bit of turn table here. And I will put a bunch of models in place. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is connect everything up. So you're gonna need your 12 volt, two amp adapter. Goes in the front here. You're going to need Ethernet cables, going to plug into the Raspberry Pi. And then the other end of that, you're going to want to plug into your router or your PC. Me personally, I'm going to put it into my laptop so I can do a direct run through. The other thing I'm going to suggest that you do is remove all external light sources that will create hard shadows on this. Um, you can see on here, on this model here, I, I, well, I don't know actually, but you can see that the lights that I'm using to do the filming with are going to cause shadows on this model that otherwise wouldn't be there and the software will pick that up as additional bits of detail and I don't want that to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these lights off here that I'm using for filming and then purely use the ring light that's on the scanner itself to be honest I'm quite fortunate to live in the UK that even it's now 11 o'clock at the time of filming it is basically grey and very dark outside. Okay, so with everything connected up, like I said, I've plugged the scanner into the Ethernet port of my PC here. I'm going to go over to my browser. I'm going to go up to the top, to this bar. And I'm going to type in open scan. Delete that. Go. What that does is it takes me to the scanner page. So because, again, this is connected up, I can go in and connect directly to the scanner. First thing you want to do is go to settings and then if um, OpenScan have sent you a token to use for the OpenScan cloud, you can input that in here and then you go and register and it'll tell you what your limits are. I think you can adjust that at any point, just go and email them, they'll adjust it. 
Um, the other one to do is to set up a Wi-Fi. So if you've got a Wi-Fi, at the moment I don't because I'm uh, out and about. But if you do, go and set your Wi-Fi network up there. It will remember it every time it boots up, so you won't actually have to connect to via Ethernet anymore. Uh, next thing you want to do is go over to scan and then check that we've got everybody here. We're going to go and up the ring light just to make sure that it's all there. As we can see, we've got our space marine here. He's ready to be scanned. He's nice and happy. What we're going to do is just make sure that everything talks to each other. So I'll spin that round. There you go. You can see that's been round. That's fine. And then we're going to adjust the up and down so that we get a different angle. You can see going all the way up works fine. And going all the way down works fine. The reason to do that is just to make sure that you've covered every single part. You can see I've missed a bit on his knees there with the talcum powder, but to be honest, I'm not too fast. I can go and fill that in myself. The only other bit you want to talk about on here is to set a name for it. So for here, we're going to set that to a space. Marie. One, and we'll set that up and then you want to just look and make sure that you're not massively overexposing areas so probably I want to take that down. The first thing to look at is the ring light. You can adjust the, the strength or intensity of that light so you can see that that's taken some of that down. The next thing to change is your shutter a milliseconds. So at the moment I've set that to 99. What that means is that the shutter will stay open for 99 milliseconds and then shut. If I go all the way down to one should be nearly black yeah it's pretty much black and even if i take the ring light all the way up it should still be really dark because i'm really not letting enough light into the camera in order to make any effect so you want this this value sort of as low as you can get it so i'll probably put that to about roughly 100 and then i'll adjust the ring light based on those values so as you can see it's still very white there's not it's not a lot of detail there Let's go and change that. Take that down another notch. I think we're good there. I quite like the way that that's going. So what we'll do is oh, no plus there. Don't want to put pluses or any weird things in there. You just want it straight names. It's usually better not to put in spaces or anything. Right, once that's all set up, go down and hit play. What we'll do is go and set the scanner up and get moving. And you'll get a preview of the photos that it's taking as it goes round. Yeah, we'll just let that run. With that done there, you know that it's done because it comes up with ready. Sometimes it goes to the end and then asks if you'd like to do a second pass. I think I'll turn that off in settings because it doesn't do it anymore. But that's done now. Go up here to files and cloud. You can see I've already got a few bits in there. Um, done a few statue marines anyway. But our new one is that guy. Let us upload that. So once that's all done and uploaded, hopefully after a, a a minute or two you should get a reconstruction here you go to uh, your Dropbox bit on there I mean they say they're a free group of people so if you feel like giving them a donation please do go to download your model and then it drops into a model over there I've already done it and then extracted it all and opened it up in Blender and this is what it looks like so you can tell from the initial scan that this looks pretty fantastic like it's got all the grates, it's got all the little grates on the back. It hasn't really captured the detail on his legs, but I mean, it's done well. There should be a couple more bits in there, I think. But all the detail I think that you'd need is there. Like we've got the even bits of the Imperial Eagle coming off there. So um, I'm really happy with that. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we got this Hellbrook. So this is from the Dark Vengeance box set, I believe. Just as a size comparison between the two items. First one was this Space Marine on the left here. And this one is the Hellbrook. And as you can see, it's pretty well painted, but I'd be happy to repaint that. So I'm just going to talc this up again and see how it goes.
So again, we go over to skip. This guy is ready. We'll call this one a little brooks. One, we can do any cropping or anything. I uh, would adjust some of this conditions. Also go around the model and just check that it matches up and that there's no not going to catch. Then once we're comfy, we'll go and hit baby. It goes and I'm good. <laughs> We'll let that run. Right, so with that done, I've just given it a couple of minutes to upload and then downloaded the results. Here they are in Blender. We have a look around, it's a lovely looking model, really nicely finished, especially along the spine. There's a couple of bits where I think it might have lost focus. Um, maybe I could use some of that a focus stacking to get it a bit crisper in places. But yeah, even on the face, that's come out quite nice. I mean, there is a little bit of work to be done inside there. Maybe if I took some like, closer up pictures or something, um, we'd get something better. But overall, really impressed with that. On to the next one. Last one we're going to do is something a bit more organic and that is this Tyranid Shrike here. The wings on that are no longer in production from Forge World. I'm kind of hoping they make new models, but we'll see up until that time. I am one wing down on this fella, so actually this is a very good use case. It's got some really fine detail in there. There's plenty of, of room for it to get obscured by those wings, etc. Prep for this. I'm going to do a little differently than I did before. I'm going to use more of a scanning spray. This stuff comes from a company called ASUB. It sprays on and then evaporates over time. The reason for doing that is I could very well strip and repaint this thing, but today is not that day. So I'd like to keep it as it is. It's all done. Let us go and upload that. Files. Right. Here it is in Blender. All I did was download it off the email again, off the Dropbox thing. So, yeah, let's have a quick look around. Let's have a look. So, it's picked up the detail in its leg. What are they? Vents? Gashes? I don't know. Someone let me know in the comments. Um, but I've got really good detail of what these sockets need to look like, uh, at least on the female ends. So, I can add those into the male ends of these sockets. Had a bit of overlap where it sort of struggled to m tell the difference between this leg here and this arm. But otherwise, that's some really nicely detailed wing. I mean, the, the body of that is just a warrior, so I can get that any time. But it's this wing that I want. And if I go and add modify a quick, you should be able to see what that looks like. If I was to mirror that over, I mean, imagine I get rid of the upper head, but almost instantly we've got another wing in there and another arm set to take that around so it's done exactly what it was after so yeah that's cool but let's wrap it up i'll pull all the objects into blender now and we'll take a look at them all okay so this is everybody in blender so we've got our space marine over here our shrike and our hell brute over there yeah i'll take one quick pattern around so that we can have a look at those most of those pretty excellent i'd struggle to do that with any other scanner i think if anyone knows of a better scanner out there that'd be able to get better results than this let me know because i don't think i'll be able to find one especially for the value that they're kind of charging at the minute i think this just goes at like 300 400 euro so yeah really really impressed with this scanner i'm going to be using it a fair amount thanks for watching this video and thanks again to OpenScan for sending me the scanner over um, I hope it's been very useful for you if it has please 
hit the like button and consider subscribing. I plan to do a few more bits of content on this. Um, so please stick around. If you've got any particular questions, leave them as a comment. But yeah, you already know all that. Thanks again. Good. Bye.